naturally after hearing an exhaust note such as this, uh, I started to, you know, do a little research and look around for ways to increase the power because, you know, it, it has this nice rumbly exhaust note and it, it sounds the bit I wanted to, I wanted to actually feel like I got some power now. So, and that's, that's just kind of what naturally happens once you put an exhaust on the car, you kind of want to, you know, boost the power output a bit. So, you know, I, I did a little bit of research and I came across, you know, a few articles related to freeing up some horsepower. Uh, by removing the uh, VTCS or the inertial variable tumbler, tumbler control. Now, now, what the variable tumbler control is, it's, uh, it's basically a set of valves that sit in your intake manifold. Um, there are several makes and models that have had this. A lot of Japanese cars have it. Um, uh, the Nissan Sentra had this um, at one point. But if you're looking for, uh, to get a little bit of horsepower gains, if you're looking to do a bit of tuning in your car, um, this VTCS system or variable inertial tumbler control can prove to be, you know, a bit restrictive as far as airflow is concerned and, you know, can rob you of horsepower. So basically that's what this video is going to cover. I'm going to cover how to or demonstrate uh, the removal of the VTCS system and at the same time I'm going to clean and prep the manifold because I'm going to do a little bit of porting and polishing. Uh, on the manifold to help get a few extra ponies, screws a few extra ponies out of this modification. That's pretty popular amongst the BJ drivers. A lot of guys with P5s and protégés, they often do this mod to free up a few extra ponies. Um, something else you can do with this mod is add the MP3 computer. So that's what this video is going to cover. Let's get to it. Okay, real quick before I get started. I want to share a few more in-depth details on the VTCS system. Here the steel shot shows the valves mounted in the runners in the closed position. When closed there is 90% blockage occurring. This default position occurs when the engine is cold and running in open loop. It works by pulling air over the top of the valve through the small openings. The amount of air that comes through is reduced but the velocity of the air charge is very high and since it comes over the top it naturally tends to curve downward, tumbling, rotating into the port and finally into the combustion chamber. This high speed turbulent air mixes with the atomized fuel spray which is very rich when the engine is cold. The speed of the air charge also helps push the unburned gases through the catalyst very quickly and help preserve the catalytic converter and help it heat up faster. Once the engine reaches full operating temperature, the valves open and allow full flow. But for a performance engine, this can be restrictive if you want more power, so it's got to be removed. Now I've already removed three of the VTCS valves from the intake and being a little clumsy there, I dropped one but no worries, I can retrieve it later. These valves are held into place by small Phillips screws and can be sometimes difficult or even impossible to remove because over time through multiple heat cycles, the screws will seize themselves into place. I was only able to get a successful extraction with one screw, as you can see on the first one. If this occurs to you, here's how to solve that issue. Take a die grinder with a carbide burr and grind away the head of the screw. Make sure the screw head is completely gone. This releases the pressure the screw head was placing on the valve, making it loose for removal. Once all the valves have been removed, simply slide the shaft out of the manifold. A small amount of twisting motion with some pressure may be required for it to slide out, but once you get the shaft out, you can move on to the next step. To clean the intake runners, I'm going to be using two brushes and some carburetor cleaner with a cordless drill. These brushes are two and a quarter in diameter and can be purchased on Amazon. You can find the Valvoline brand carb cleaner at your local parts store. A quick word of advice. Before you attempt to clean a part this way, I suggest putting painter's plastic or lots of absorbent towels on the surface you will be working on because liquid carbon and oil deposits are tough to clean up even on steel non-porous surfaces. I had to stop and clean up several times in between to manage the mess I created. Something else you may want to follow along with is regulating the speed of the drill. These brushes shed quite a few bristles during the agitation process and it gets worse if the drill speed is too high. I found that a medium speed works the best.
When working with the parts of the manifold that have a 90 degree curve, it helps to move the brush in a circular pattern so that it will come in contact with the runner walls completely for much better results. Now I don't expect everyone to have access to a solvent tank, but this can be beneficial at removing some of the more stubborn bits of carbon. If you don't have access to a solvent tank, you can use some running water with oven cleaner to help remove stubborn gunk in your parts. It would also go quite a ways at flushing out the runners and removing a lot of the shedded bristles from the brushes, so be sure and see that all of those have been removed. You can see this agitating brush process cleans very well when used with carb cleaner. The runners came out nice and bright and I was very pleased with the results. Here's another view of the runners which show how well they have been cleaned and this allows the view of the stepped casting lines inside the manifold which will be removed during the porting process. So be sure you tune in for that video.